Each engine has 18 cylinders and delivers 3,400 HP. The gigantic Curtis Wright engines are being restored to life by Anderson Aeromotive in Idaho so that the queen of the air can take to the skies again. The test facility. 2,900 revs per minute is the speed needed for takeoff. The instruments and the engine control unit work just as they do on board and have to be operated very delicately. You know, to see these engines run after all the time and work that goes into them, uh, it, it's very satisfying. And you always have little minor problems like we're having on this one, but when you work all that out, in the end you have a good engine, it goes to the customer and uh, they don't have any problems and you see it fly away, it's a very good feeling. There are just some final jobs now, such as fitting the new exhaust and cylinder head temperature sensors. Each of the 18 cylinders is monitored by one of these temperature gauges. For me, it's uh, one of the most exciting parts about uh, being a, in this project. It's When you see the engines come to life, it's like seeing life come into the project. So for me, it's very exciting. Like the superstar itself, 98-year-old Chet Heth, or Mr. Propeller as he's known, is a living legend. He's been at Hamilton Standard since the 1940s, working on the propeller systems of the Lockheed Constellation series. In Burbank, north of Los Angeles, all that remains is the Bob Hope Regional Airport. At one time, this was the heart of the American aviation industry. From the 1920s, the Lockheed Aircraft Company played a major role in the growth of the region. This came to an end in the 1990s, however, when it moved to Marietta in Georgia. For the propellers of the L-1649A, Chet Heth tracks down licensed overhaul specialists and helps coordinate the work. This was the site of the Lockheed production plant for Lockheed County Aircraft. The flight production flight test was in this area, and they, uh, they were adjacent to Burbank Airport, which they, where they did their flight testing, and manufacturing was right behind me. For perhaps two or three miles down the road was all Lockheed manufacturing. To the left here was final assembly uh, and production flight test. My office was in Beverly Hills, and they would generally call me around 3 or 4 in the afternoon because they just got back from a flight test. The airplane had to be delivered the next morning, and they had a propeller difficulty. So they said, come on out and fix it as soon as you can. So I sometimes you just have to work all night to get the problem fixed so they could fly the next day. The new propeller spinners, or domes, as they're also known, are made by Hermann's Metal Spinning in Glendale to the south of Burbank. The spin shop that you had just seen is the place we send uh, portions of the spinner to. We receive from Lufthansa eight spinners for repair. We found out that the best way to repair them is to replace certain portions of the shell which are allowed in the overhaul manual. The process starts with a metal sheet made from modern aircraft aluminium. First, a circle is cut out. Well, what we're doing here is we're doing metal spinning. We're metal spinners and metal formers. We uh, take flat sheet metal and we form it into the nose cone of the spinner, nose cone of an airplane. It could be uh, anything from a hubcap to a lighting part. But uh, what we're doing here today is we're replicating a spinner done on the Connie and we're going to do it the same way it was done originally. We're using wood tooling, we're using a breakdown, and uh, pretty much done by hand. Many of the employees here are Mexican. They are skilled metal workers and genuine sheet metal artists. The workpiece is slowly drawn into shape. Later, it will be heated to 600 degrees Celsius before being cooled in a saline solution and frozen in a cold chamber. The parts are then stretched over a wooden mold to give them their final shape.
Modern metal alloys permit much higher levels of material quality and durability to be achieved than were possible in the 1950s. It's a really archaic, it goes back a hundred years, this process. It's done exactly like the original spinners were done. And you'll see how much hand work is involved. Uh, and it's really a wonderful process to see because it's done right before you. You can see the metal moving before your eyes. And it's one of the very unique processes that you can observe it. Today we're in Toronto in Canada to visit Hope Aero. Here are the propeller systems. The first set has been completed, but we've been told there are problems with some of the blades. So now we've got to see if we've got enough blades to complete the engines. Manfred Rosenthal is currently responsible for overhauling the components. He's scheduled for a meeting with Chet Heth at Hope Aero, an experienced overhaul company which specializes in aircraft propellers. It takes years of experience to know where all the propeller material is. Uh, to find the parts was not a challenge, but the challenge was to find shops that can do these propellers. There's not only the propeller hub and blades that you see in this shop, but there are other items that make up the propeller system. And uh, each of those takes a different technology, so I had to find a propeller shop that did that kind of work. A total of six propeller sets is being repaired here, including two replacement assemblies for use as spare parts. We have uh, 33 blades all together from the uh, four engine propeller, so it has 12 on the aircraft. We got 33, um, we've been inspecting them for damage, wear, corrosion, and so far these nine have been rejected because there's none of material left to repair the blade. Uh, we have nine blades that have passed all uh, inspection processes and they're good. And we'll need nine more blades so that we have 12 on the airplane plus six spare blades for the two spare propellers. Each set consists of three individual blades. The extensive work package includes an incoming visual inspection and evaluation, plus non-destructive testing and crack detection tests under UV light to check for material defects. Further work steps include surface inspection, contour mapping, refacing of the blades to adapt the contours of the individual propeller groups and the removal of any damaged sections. When developing the Superstar, the engineers repeatedly ventured into new dimensions of aircraft construction. The top priorities were to increase performance and efficiency. At just under two and a half meters, the propeller blades were, at the time, the longest that had ever been deployed in civil aviation. Before final assembly, the rubber elements of the mechanical de-icing system the blade fastener barrels, including cogs, bearings and hydraulic control units, were also overhauled. The adjustment mechanism permits the propeller blade angle to be optimized and synchronizes the individual blades to minimize noise and vibration levels during flight. After being balanced and subjected to a successful final inspection in Toronto, the propeller sets are sent back to Auburn. Chet Heth was the man who, with his vast experience and valuable contacts, was given responsibility for revitalizing the complex propeller technology in this mammoth project. This was because he'd been involved in the production of the Lockheed Superstar propellers half a century ago. The final assembly took place just before installation on the engines of the Lockheed Superstar in Auburn. Finally, the propeller sets had to be rebalanced dynamically on the aircraft. 